if anyone else, some people know, I used to play the guitar and sing and write songs all the time. And then COVID just like wiped me of any creativity. And I didn't write and I didn't play. And I grew my nails long. And then I just had my excuse of I can't play anymore because I have these long, pretty nails. But the Holy Spirit eventually just said, it's time to cut them off. And it's time to worship again. And that particular song, two days ago, I was just, tears were just flying because I was like so grateful. It's such a privilege to praise. So um, I just hope that you get into this next one. Louis, I know you know this one. I speak the name of Jesus over you. And there's many people hurting right now. There's many people in sorrow. So this song is for you. I speak the name of Jesus over you. Let anything come out of your mouth. 
yourself. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. It doesn't matter if you don't know this song. I just want you to just riff with me for a bit. Say whatever you want to say, okay? Lord God, you increase our faith. That man, he said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. It's the most powerful scripture for me in that whole Bible. Because we can have full faith today, and tomorrow we diagnose with cancer, and where's your faith? It's like, we got to stay. We got to stay in that mindset of faith. So we got to beg the Lord to increase our faith every, every day. I'm going to skip over this song. But we'll do it next week because I really, really want to get us into um, the scriptures so we can really feel them in our souls, in our whole beings. So let's read together from Matthew 4, 23, because we need to really think about this. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all, not some, kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease among the people. And lots of people want to say that, okay, that's Jesus, or oh, that's their disciples. We went through this last week, but this is important for the people that weren't here. Matthew 8, 17. So that he fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He himself took our infirmities upon himself and carried away our diseases. So the prophet said that Jesus carried away our diseases. How can we explain our current sicknesses and diseases when we're in Christ? These are honest questions that Christians should be asking themselves. Holy Spirit filled Christians, right? We need to ask, we need to ask the hard questions. Here's a harder one, Matthew 10, seven to eight. This was a commandment, are we doing it? And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons freely you have received freely give my question was was jesus instructing only his direct disciples to do this or are we supposed to be doing this too because i know a lot of christians that don't believe that we should be doing this too but i read the bible like a little child in faith i just take whatever it says what especially when it's jesus speaking it's jesus speaking here this is his commandment to people that follow him Luke 18, 42, then Jesus said to him, receive your sight, your faith has made you well. We looked at that last week. We noted that our faith makes us well. Notice when he actually heals people, he often says, your faith made you well. Okay, 1 Peter 2, 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, on that cross, that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed and you are healed. So we use this scripture a lot. Christians like to say, by his stripes I'm healed, to declare healing. Question, we're going into it tonight. Why does this not work? Why are we still struggling with all sorts of illnesses and diseases? And I've never seen more people sick than I have this year. I've never seen so much cancer. I've never seen so many strokes and heart attacks and blood clots. And we all have some understanding of where some of that is coming from. But it's just rampant. So I really feel like we need to really tackle this. Third John chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So my question for you to think about tonight as we go into it, are we prospering in all things, including health? If not, why? We looked at James 5 last week. We talked about the elders in the church praying over the sick and anointing them with oil. And I had asked you guys, have your elders of your church ever prayed over you and anointed you with oil? And I think I only got one person in the chat that said, yes, her church is doing that. But a lot of churches put you on a prayer list. 
and they just say, okay, we're praying for you. But that is not the way that they were instructed to do that. They were instructed to bring the sick to the elders and let them lay hands on them, anoint them, and pray over them. So I would just wonder where those practices went. James 5, 16, confess your trespass to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. My question was, do you regularly confess your sins and pray for others, even your enemies? Because that was a commandment as well. We have to forgive and pray. It's such a hard one. It's such a hard one. Not just pray, we have to bless them. That's so hard, but this is a commandment. And in James 5, 16, it says, you confess your trespass to one another. So it's not just a confession between you and God. This is why sometimes people will say to me, Jessica, you're too open. You share all your weaknesses. You share all your flaws. And yes, people can use that to hurt me. They have. But at the same time, I'm being transparent because I want people to learn from my mistakes. If I go off in this direction and I learn something from it, if I share that with you, it may help you not going off in that same direction. That is my reason for sharing. But I agree, it needs to be healthy boundaries in place so that we don't put ourselves into a position of danger where someone can use that information to hurt us. So I do understand that, but James 5, 16, it really does say, confess your trespasses to one another. Now those should be other believers that you're tracking with, it's not just to anybody online. Online is not the place to do it. Online is a sea of people who are looking to attack in, a, in an age of offense. It's a dangerous place out there. An important place to spread the gospel, but a dangerous place nonetheless. This is the list we looked at last week, and this is why I want to go over it for people that missed. Potential barriers to healing and health review. I'm going to go through this quick because we did this last week and some people were here. The question to think about as we review this list from last week, has the Holy Spirit convicted you in any of these areas and which areas when I read them through? I talked to some people after last week and they admitted, yes, the Holy Spirit seemed to convict them in some areas and they, and they got a breakthrough and I'm, I asked permission, I'm allowed to share it. Gail, who asked for prayer last week, she has a tremor and um, she was looking to have healing in that. She wrote me and said that on Sunday, she was able to write her name without shaking. And that was a big breakthrough for her. So I just wanted to share that testimony with all of you because those that were on last week, we were praying for her and we are seeing that the righteous prayers availeth much. So unbelief, number one potential barrier, unbelief. That's why I say, Lord, help us believe, help us believe. You can say you're in belief, but there could be like a shadow of doubt in the back of your mind. Yes, I believe in healing. I'm gonna be healed, I'm gonna be healed. And then in the back of your mind, you're like, am I gonna die? Is this not gonna work, right? We have to have full faith. Unbelief in the word of God or in the fact that the power of God can heal you. It says that in the end times church, we will deny the power thereof, meaning we won't believe in the power of God healing. Jesus told those that he healed that their faith had made them well. Are you fully persuaded that you will be healed and in full faith? And if you're not, take it to God. And I'm not, I'm not fully persuaded about very much either. That's why I have to ask God all the time, every day, fill me up with faith because I'm not fully persuaded in every area. And that's why I'm not prospering in every area. We all have our areas of weaknesses. Ignorance, second potential barrier. Not knowing, failing to meditate on, or neglecting to speak the words of life in the word of God. So whether you don't know the scriptures, or you know them but you're not standing on them, and you're not using your mouth to speak words of life. So some of us do this. We read the word of God and we speak scriptures, we memorize them, and we speak health and life and this to other people, or maybe out loud, and then at the exact same time, out of this corner of the mouth, we're saying, I'm sick. I don't know when I'm gonna get better. My life is hard. Okay, these are words of death. You're speaking it over your own life. I'm not saying that we have to be um, a liar and say that we're healthy when we're not healthy or that we're doing well when we're not doing well. But we do have to be very careful with our words. They really do affect your whole body. I'm sure you guys have seen the experiments when they speak life and words of life over water molecules and they look in the electron microscope and it makes these beautiful designs. And when they speak angry words or, or desperate or sad words over another petri dish of water, when they looked in the electron microscope, it was like this ugly design. It was like fractured and broken. Words have life. Anger is the third potential barrier. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil. From That's from Ephesians 4, verse 26 to 27. We learned this last week. We said, 
Yes, we can be angry. People are going to make you angry. But the sin is in going to bed with that anger. So you can't go to bed and let the sun go down and hold on to that anger. That anger is going to make you sick. And that anger is a sin. When you go to bed with it, that is the sinning part. Unforgiveness tied right into anger. When Jesus healed people, he often told them their sins were forgiven. He said, go and sin no more. Your sins are forgiven. We are commanded to forgive others and warned that if we don't, Father God will not forgive us. So if you can think right now of anyone, anybody that you're holding on to a grudge, it says if you go to the altar and try to give an offering to God. So for us, when we come to God and we want to give him praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving, if we have a grudge with somebody, it says leave your gift at the altar and go settle your score with them. He doesn't want your offering until your debts are cleared. You don't have a debt against anyone. You're not holding a debt against somebody. Number five, bitterness, resentment. That all ties into the anger and the unforgiveness. Scripture tells us that joy is a medicine to our bodies, but bitterness is like a cancer. Many people that hold on to a lot of bitterness and resentment do indeed end up getting physical cancer because they have a spiritual cancer in their body of bitterness. Potential barrier number six, unconfessed sin. Scripture tells us to not just confess our sins to God, but to those in the body of Christ. We looked at that before, that James 516. I know I'm going fast because I really want to get into the herbs and the plants. This is the important part. So hold on. Hold on to your hats if you feel bored with the repetition here. Idolatry. And remember, as I'm saying this list, even when you saw it last week, you're asking yourself, Lord, Holy Spirit, is one are one of these an area that I need to work on? Am I am I struggling with any of these unknowingly? We can struggle with them unknowingly. Idolatry, we're commanded to love our Lord God with all our heart, soul, and strength. Are we making God our priority or are we making other things our priority? And guess what? Even those of us that work in ministry, we can make our ministry work an idol. But we're doing it for God, right? So it's all tied up. It can get confusing. But I could make my gospel praise fitness classes an idol. If I focus on them and I focus on them, I focus on them, then I'm not thinking on God. Then I'm practicing idolatry. Are we making other people or ourselves idols? So when you think, when you wake up in the morning, what's your first thought? Are we spending more time on social media than with God? I'm guilty on social media. Very guilty. I've been asking the Lord to give me balance. I need to know, God, I give it to you. I surrender it to you versus, okay, I need to do this much and then God will do the rest. I'm really struggling with that. So if that's you, if you're having that trouble too, ask him to show you, okay, do this much and give the rest to me and surrender the rest to me. Because I think we take things on and we try to do things in our own might, power, and strength, and then we get exhausted. We're not working in the spirit. All right, potential barrier, next one, occult participation. Many people are involved in the occult unknowingly, like we're all Christians here, but how many of us have done horoscope readings? How many Christians are studying Enneagrams? That's those number things. How many Christians have gone to psychics or yoga classes, doing Reiki, using crystals for healing? Those are all new age practices. They are part of the occult. And I know because I know Maggie and I, both of us, we came out of the new age. We're very sensitive to the new age. And a lot of Christians that were not in the new age don't know the dangers of participating in these things. If you have any questions about the new age and you are not sure if you're dabbling in it, feel free to contact me after this um, because, yeah, that's really dangerous and it's really important for us. All right, I'm going to go into uh, the next one, consequence of unhealthy habits and choices. This is a good one. This is the one we don't want to talk about. So we want to be like, I stand on scripture. I will be healthy by his stripes. I'm healed. And then we're like not exercising. We're eating wrong. We're not spending time alone with God. We have no healthy boundaries with other human beings. This is not going to work. You have to do your part too, right? We have these physical temples, these holy temples. We got to take care of them. So spend time with God because if you don't, you're going to get burnt out. Unhealthy relational boundaries. How many people are like, Christians especially, we get walked all over. You're a Christian. You should do this for me. Oh, you're a Christian. You should want to do this for me. Oh, you should bend over backwards. You should offer this for free. The list goes on and on because you're a Christian, right? So unhealthy relational boundaries, that can lead to burnout and then that can lead to comfort food binging. This was me. People pleasers have this issue. We can binge 
binge on foods at night because we're looking for comfort, we're looking for peace in the wrong places. We're not seeking God for it. So we can create a bad habit of not taking time needed to prepare those healthy snacks and not exercise. And, and a lot of people will say, oh, I don't have money to eat well, or I don't have money to come to exercise class. Then cut Netflix. <laughs> cut something else that's not helping you. So as we went through those, when you meditate on the healing scriptures and review the list of potential barriers, did the Holy Spirit convict you in any of these areas? And which areas? I just want you to take a moment to think, just for a moment. You can share your convictions. You can privately pray about them. But it's really important that you repent. Pray for renewing of the mind, whether that's forgiving someone, whether you have to go to counseling to deal with emotional trauma from the past, or to like help you let go of any anger and unforgiveness, or to set up boundaries. Be honest with the Lord, confess your weakness, and then do the hard work, the changing of the daily habits, like learning to eat healthier and learning what natural plants and herbs the Lord has provided us for healing. So I'm gonna take a moment here and um, I'm gonna stop sharing just for a second and I'm gonna give you guys a chance to unmute if you want. Just uh, raise your hand if you wanna share anything. If you learned anything from this list and you feel like, okay, this is an area where I'm, I'm either sinning or I'm kind of in the wrong. This may be something I, I learned something different and new today. Did anyone want to share anything before we go into the, the plants, the herbs, the nutritional side of being cured of diseases and illnesses? Everyone's good? Okay. All right. If you want to share after, just let me know. Don't be shy. All right, we're going to go into the part that's really important here. So, this is a scripture from Revelation 22, uh, verse 2 to 3. We looked at it last week, but I wrote out the whole verse this time, the whole scripture. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month this is the important part the leaves of the tree were for healing of the nations the leaves of the tree and there shall be no more curse but the throne of god and of the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him so i just highlighted the leaves of the tree that were for healing this man that i'm going to be sharing his information is named michael andrew johnson kingya in jamaica he believes that god has given us all the herbs in nature for our healing. He thinks that we have everything we could need. Now, the problem is, is that some of us are in like America, Canada. We don't have access to the same kind of um, vegetation that he does, but you can order it. You can go to health food stores. Um, you can order it in. It's a little bit trickier, but I have lots of examples of things that you can definitely get. So let's take a look at what he says as he cites the following as causes of disease and illness in the body. Now he's not looking at the spiritual side. He's not looking at the emotional or the mental health issues. He's only looking at it from a physical point of view right now. So he says the way that we eat, too much sugar, salt, these are the things we can't always control. Pesticides are being sprayed on our food, GMOs, herbicides, right? And it's getting worse. They're literally gonna be putting mRNA in our food and our water, what do we do about it? Number two, parasites. Parasites feed on sugar and destroy white blood cells. So if your diet is high on sugar, which mine is, and I'm working on it, then I have a lower white and red blood cell count and that can eventually lead to cancer in the body when you have a lower count. Number three, inflammation of the cells in the body. Lots of people are experiencing this right now. Inflammation all over their body and that inflammation leads to sick, sickness and disease. And number four, pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, some people have to be on them, but they all have consequences. They all have side effects, every single one. So this man's, he, his uh, mantra is that we do not need to take pharmaceutical drugs, that there is something in nature for each thing. Let's take a look at his must-haves. He says iron, you must have it. It stimulates blood with oxygen. 
Vitamin C, he says, you just you shouldn't just take the um, vitamins. A lot of us here, we're lazy, we just take vitamins. But he says, through natural products, like fresh squeezed orange juice. Vitamin C is a carrier. So it carries the iron into your blood. It carries different products in, into your body. So it's almost like a carrier. It, we need that. Vitamin B17, he said, instead of taking the pill, vitamin B17, you can find it in jackfruit, moringa seed, and flax seed. Again, you might say, I don't know what moringa is. I don't, can't get my hands on a jackfruit, but we can get flax seeds. Vitamin D, I mean myself, I take my liquid vitamin D. And we're not taking enough. A lot of people are only taking 1,000 IU a day, and that is not enough, especially if you have pigment in your skin. My husband, who's Jamaican, he takes, I think he's taking 7,000 IUs a day to keep healthy. That's what his doctor told him. So we need, we're needing to take a lot more than we think. Zinc, magnesium, potassium, which helps with blood pressure, black pepper, and cayenne pepper. I've heard doctors say that black pepper is bad for you. This guy's telling how amazing it is. We're getting conflicting information between our doctors and herbalists. Organic apple cider vinegar, watermelon, raw, we'll, we'll talk about like how each one of these things applies in a moment. Raw onion and garlic. A lot of us use that in our cooking, but when you cook it, it loses its properties. You need to have it raw and blended up. Scallion, turmeric, avocado seeds, the actual seed inside. He calls it pear, in Jamaica it's pear. Cabbage, sweet potato with the skin. I always peel my sweet potato and take off all that skin. He says, with the skin boiling, it has properties. Watercress, coconut's an amazing antibiotic. So um, basically when we're using oils in our cooking, we should mostly be using coconut. And, really, and I'm horrible, I use vegetable oil. It's terrible for you, terrible. Lemon juice, parsley and tomatoes. Some of you might already be on these already, but um, for those, some, some of us are just learning. I'm just learning. So bear with me if it's going a little bit slow for you if you're already on these. Um, Ceraci, this is really potent. This is great for cancer. So taking that Ceraci fruit, leaves, and seeds and making a tea out of it, it's excellent for cancer. So is this next one, Cinco Bible. That's what they call it in Jamaica. It's also known as the aloe vera plant elderberry plant, moringa leaves, another excellent anti-cancerous one, medina plant, green plantain leaves, the actual leaves, guava leaves, these are not the fruits, these are the leaves, hibiscus flower and leaves, valerian root, parsley, rosemary, and thyme, but you can't just use, you know, the spices you get at the store that are all dried out and dead. We're talking about everything that has life, that is growing and green. So now we're gonna look at, he gave uh, examples of things that you combine together to make like a juice or like a crushed up um, pulp that you drink that will heal diseases. So the first one he mentioned was watercress plus black pepper plus organic apple cider, cider vinegar. That was just one drink he said that was excellent for healing all diseases, these are all general. Next one, avocado seeds plus black pepper, plus fresh squeezed orange juice. Remember that that orange juice is that vitamin C that's carrying the properties of the avocado seeds and the black pepper into your bloodstream. Raw onion and raw garlic crushed and drank. As I said, cooking kills the healing properties. So when I, I believe I had COVID, I don't know what I had, but it just would not go away. And I was, I was sneezing up this really weird paste for like a month. And I mean, when I say paste, it was thick, like really thick, it wasn't a normal cold. What I made was like raw red onion, raw garlic, raw onion, raw turmeric, and I think I put lemon and honey and I just ground it all up and drank it with hot water. And that like eventually that cleared it out, but nothing else was working. So I think he's onto something here. Let's take a look at specific illnesses and diseases and, and because I know some people on here might even be struggling with some of these. So high blood pressure, raw onion plus raw garlic, crushed, made into a steep tea. He says drinking these things steady for nine days straight. He says that will take care of it. You could also make it like a lifestyle where you just drink it every day. Grapefruits are another thing that will bring down your high blood pressure. All right, cancer. Cancer is caused by those abnormal cells in the body and this decrease or this lack of red and white blood cells. 
So here's some things he suggested to help with cancer or eradicate it even. Cabbage plus black pepper plus turmeric. And that is just one, one drink there. This keeps coughing out on me. I don't know why. All right. So remember we talked before about the sweet potato with the skin on. So you keep the skin on, you boil it, and then you add that fresh squeezed orange juice for that vitamin C carrier. Next option for the blend is tomato blended plus black pepper plus that flax seed. That's that B17. You could also use um, the jackfruit there or uh, the, other, the other one mentioned before, and then that squeeze orange juice. Once again, you need that vitamin C to carry it. And the last concoction he mentioned specifically for colon, lung, and stomach cancers was parsley plus black pepper plus turmeric. I'm gonna let my camera die, it's okay. So note the vitamin C in most of these, right? So they, uh, that helps carry the medicinal properties. HIV, so he's saying it's a parasite that needs to be killed. So in this case, he mentioned Saracy plant again. He mentioned the aloe vera, the Cinco Bible plant, black pepper. This is just a list of a bunch of things. This is not one drink with all the, all the ingredients. This is a bunch of things that all help kill parasites. Black pepper, organic cider, vinegar, frankincense, virgin olive oil. That helps uh, kind of coat it, the same with the castor oil, uh, charcoal. Iron, B17, that was in that jackfruit, the moringa, the flaxseed, and then the castor oil. I know we're moving quickly, but I just want to get through everything. And if you ever want to see any of these slides, you can also take pictures of your screen so that you have a, a capture of it. But you can also ask me to share some of these um, slides with you. Diabetes caused by fat in the liver and the pancreas is not, they're not able to supply glucose and insulin. So that's what causes that diabetes. So for this one, he gave a very specific concoction. He said three, and I find it very interesting, three leaves of moringa, three leaves of green plantain, and three leaves of guava plant, plus that raw onion made into a tea. And he said to drink that for nine days. So I love that because we've got like this trinity of moringa and plantain and guava plant. Kidney stones, this one's a really good one. He talked about there's a different drink to break up the kidney stone if it's really big and you need to actually crush it up first in your body and then a different drink to actually pass the stone once it's broken up. You don't want to drink the one where you're passing it before you broke it up because it's very painful. So to break up the kidney stones, thyme tea, lemon juice, and apple cider vinegar. And to pass the kidney out once you've already been on the thyme tea for a bit, now you're switching over to parsley juice, lemon juice, and virgin olive oil. And then the list below was just other options he said that were good for kidneys, to keep your kidneys in good function. Eggplant, I never eat eggplant, but eggplant, dandelion root, I, I have made salads with dandelion root before, celery, cucumber, papaya, that raw garlic, that raw onion, heart problems, watermelon, cayenne pepper, I'm surprised with the cayenne pepper. I thought that might, like, with the heat, cause your heart rate to go up. But anyways, cayenne pepper, hibiscus leaf, and the flowers of that. And then the raw onion and garlic. Notice how often that raw onion and garlic comes back up. Lung issues. This would have been a good one for people during the past few years. Rosemary plus thyme plus that fresh orange juice. Fibroids. This is an issue for many, many women as they get older. Um, and those fibroids can turn into cancer. That happened to my mom recently. She got uterine cancer from fibroids. So here's green papaya with the, with the skin. A lot of times we just take the skin off. With the skin and the seeds. Black pepper, fresh squeezed orange juice. And to clear metals out of the body, like if you had to take the vaccine, cilantro and parsley. He said those were excellent from just, and not just uh, the COVID vaccine, but all vaccines that have metals in them. There's aluminum, there's all sorts of weird stuff in those. So we're going to open it up into um, prayer request time. I know, as I said, that I threw a lot your way, but we can pray about um, healing and health, or we can pray about anything else that's on your mind. Um, we don't have to limit it to the healing and health. And yeah, just ask the Holy Spirit what to share and... I would ask that you would have that boldness and that courageousness to pray for one another because um, I will ask and people if they feel 
led to pray for others.